So prior to buying my motorhome, I'd been living in an old 1974 CI Europa caravan that I'd saved from the scrapyard for the princely sum of £60. It had only cold running water and single glazed windows, but it was beautiful and it was home. I was so lucky with the location of my caravan as well. It was on one of the most beautiful parts of the Kent coastline with the most dramatic sunsets and sunrises in an area of outstanding beautiful countryside. I'd been well and truly bitten by the bug of van and caravan living. I decided to have a look for a van originally that was very retro to my caravan, something from the 70s with a bit of character. However these proved to be quite expensive and quite hard to keep on the road. And the single glazing windows can be very cold in the winter time as well if you're living in them full time. I already owned an old double decker bus that I was slowly converting to a mobile home. This was used for various weekend shows, steam festivals and country fairs and on the outside it would be restored as an old bus, an old East Kent double decker bus, whilst on the inside it would provide living accommodation for my family while we were at the shows. However, despite how trendy and how fun it is, double decker buses tend to be very impractical, not only from the cost of running them, but finding somewhere to park them as well. I knew if I was going to go down the bus route, it would have to be something a little bit smaller, something that looked more camper van size and not large vehicle size. I've always loved the old Ford Transit vans. I have fond memories as a child of these absolutely jammed to the gunnels of passengers lurching their way around various town centres. This was an old Southern National one that I actually thought about buying. It was based in Yorkshire but it turned out to be more of a day van than a motorhome. It was then this 1991 Transit with Dormer Bill bodywork popped up on eBay and what was more it was only based on the Isle of Sheppey which was just further along the coast from where I was living. Absolutely perfect. It had been new to Humberside County Council in 1991 as a welfare bus. Later it had been sold to a horse dealer who'd used it for travelling between England and Ireland to view horses. Although careworn the layout looked brilliant with less windows to let the heat out of. So I popped along to Sheppey to take a look at her. In no time at all a deal was done. Another clincher was the locally built Dormobile bodywork which was built in Folkestone, again not a million miles away from where I live. Now as I've already said the interior layout was absolutely perfect. Although it was very careworn and shabby and had seen much better days a lot of the windows had been boarded over, which prevents heat loss in the colder months. A lot of people when they look at conversions and do conversions on buses tend not to realise that. A lot of glass loses a lot of heat and the more windows that were boarded over and panelled over kept the heat in and makes the vehicle more habitable in the winter. First things first though, and I had to strip everything out, the manky old wallpaper at the back, the curtains, the remains of the bedding left behind, everything that was taken out and stripped out. And what was left was cleaned, very, very, very thoroughly cleaned. Unfortunately, a little bit of water ingress at the back end had made the woodwork inside go a little bit rotten. So this was all taken away and replaced with fresh woodwork. Originally, this was where the back doors would have been and the wheelchair lift would have been located. But now this was the bedding area and as it was somewhere that I would be spending quite a lot of time I decided I wanted it to be absolutely perfect. Once all the woodwork was replaced I wallpapered it with heavy duty wallpaper before adding the luxury of a neck curtain. Moving into the saloon where the couch was I decided to give that a thoroughly good clean. One part of the sofa that didn't scrub up very well was the armrest at the end nearest the door. It looked like it had been used as a bit of a hand rest to get in and out of the vehicle and was very grubby and very worn so I decided to remove it. I didn't really fancy resting my head on that while I was having a, a snooze. My plan was to fit front bulkheads and a doorway to keep the heat in during the cold winter months anyway. So off I trotted to a local DIY supermarket and picked up some MDF sheets. 
Due to the angle of the bodywork and the shape of the bodywork, it bows in slightly towards the top. It was actually quite awkward to cut it to shape and to cut it to size. Plus there were the main door pillars where the seat belts would have been fitted, had it been a panel van. It wasn't cut perfectly to shape, but it did the job. And with a bit of finishing off, looks presentable and does keep the heat in. It's also a big help for privacy as well, especially with the door fitted across the front. The front cab area of the minibus now resembles a porch and is a good place for leaving shoes and wet coats and such. With the bulkheads in place, the saloon area was thoroughly cleaned and had neck curtains fitted. The bulkhead in the saloon was wallpapered. At present though, the outside section in the cab still needs finishing. Next step was to fit a TV, just for a little bit of entertainment. During the warmer months in 2019, I decided I was going to clean the exterior as well as some of the skylights, which looked pretty manky and grubby. I removed the skylight above where the bedroom was. This was before I did all the woodwork. And as you can see, it benefited from a good clean-up. Thought they are caravan and motorhome skylights tend to be quite expensive to replace and this one's got a broken catch so I would like to replace it eventually but as I said it's just expensive. Next my attention turned to the kitchen and the work surface was damaged and rather grey as well so it was brightened up with a bit of sticky vinyl. I also added a microwave as well although this isn't fitted in securely and when the vehicle moves it has to be taken down but it makes cooking a little bit easier. So what powers all this electricity you say? Well I've got a leisure battery and running off the leisure battery is a rather beefy inverter and that converts the 12 volt DC into 240 volt AC which is enough to run the fridge, the microwave, the television as well as the mains interior lighting should I choose to. to. As I said I later fitted a concertina door to where the bulkhead was and it's really made it a lot more private now. With everything ready and cleaned up, it was pretty much time to move in. Despite losing the light coming through the windscreen, it's still surprisingly light inside the vehicle. I've moved my bedding in, ready to for the first night. I also added some low voltage rope lighting. And Tamar the cat, my furry best friend, moved in with me. And we all celebrated with a meal of sausages. Well, what else do you have in a motorhome? We've also gained a flying pig mascot, which was a moving in present from a friend. That sits happily on the dashboard, flapping its wings. The dashboard is very old school Ford. So the first night was spent not a million miles away from base, just in case there were any problems. And I'm glad I did that. And yes, like any old high mileage vehicle, there has been a few issues. I've had the boot door fall off, which is just riveted on, so that wasn't too much of a headache to fix. It was more of a pain in the neck than anything else. Once riveted back on though, it was all good. Something a little bit more serious though was when a tank strap gave out, allowing the fuel tank to hit the floor. Fortunately, I was parked up at the time very close to base which allowed it easy to repair. Whilst it was up in the air I went underneath to have a look at the rust and it's pretty bad, typical full transit. It's certainly not pretty underneath and it's going to need a lot of work to get it roadworthy again which is kind of what's influenced me to keep it off the road at the moment. I'm enjoying it as a static unit. But while she was on the road, which her MOT ran out in October 2019, we went to all sorts of weird and wonderful local places in Kent, just to try her out. And she's fun to drive, with no power steering, and she's certainly not the fastest vehicle on the road. But then that's part of the attraction of owning an older vehicle. So to get her back to being roadworthy again, she's going to need quite a lot of work underneath. A lot of welding, and some mechanical work as well, I suspect. A service, the brakes doing, that sort of thing. But for the time being, she quite happily sits in the corner of the yard at my work. Fortunately, I've got a very understanding boss, and he's happy to let me leave my motorhome in the corner of the yard. This saves me an awful lot of time commuting and travelling, 
as well as an awful lot of money in fuel. So is it as fun as I thought it would be living in a welfare bus? I think it is, yes. As with living in the caravan, there's times when you really do freeze, especially when the electricity trips and the heating goes off. But 99% of the time, it's toasty warm and very, very cosy. And I love the sense of freedom I get from this style of living as well. I don't feel tied down to a place at all. And if I want to, I could just drive off. Well, once I get the MOT sorted out, of course. But the potential is there to move around. And I'm either at work or out working on one of my own vehicles. So it's just a place to sleep, really. And to be honest with you, I don't think I could find accommodation, even one room on the North Kent coast, which would do me as well as this motorhome has done. So I would thoroughly recommend it. If you're thinking about taking up the van lifestyle or the bus lifestyle, give it a go. Don't be afraid to ask questions.